Hello everybody, welcome to the third round match of the um, NAF kickoff tabletop style tournament on Blood Bowl 3. Um, it's very interesting. I'm going to receive here, which is making it harder for myself, but I did think about this. I thought I want to receive, use my rerolls on offense to get the score done. And then on defense, if I don't have to use them on defense, then uh, you know at least I'll have them for overtime. There's a good chance of this going to overtime, and I want my rerolls for overtime, so I am going to receive, um, even though I think kicking is better. Right, uh, Fymir is here, and PC will be joining him. I'm going to go and really try and think this time. I didn't play very well against the Lizards, but I'm going to try and really play well this game. So uh, take it away, Fymir. Thank you very much. Hello. of NAF style tournament here we are in the third round of the tournament and Jimmy is still playing can you believe this so yeah Jimmy just uh, choosing to try to maximize his roles and offensive power I mean, I don't think the Dark Elves have any uh, reserves, so it's a uh, 11 team, so every single I'll cast... To, uh, find out more about these boobies. It's a uh, guaranteed uh, player, one less player. And with the tackle and the guard advantage, the Dark Elves are going to have it rough. But still, they are Dark Elves, so Jimmy needs to be careful. And I want to dedicate this game to our viewers in Portugal. Again, until uh, we solve the problem of uh, the random countries having the same cost as regular countries, I'm using Portugal. So I can avoid any controversy with uh, the random countries we have in the past. where every random country was a very controversial country, like most of the time. It's and okay. changing weather, I mean, cargo bay. and the weather doesn't change. Good, Jimmy starting with a few passes here, pushes here. There you go, double skulls, instant roll into, oof, one in nine, what a start. Oh, but instant reward. So that's one uh, Dark Elf less. Now comes the bleed in another lino. Obviously, the setup of the dark elf to protect the blitzers and the witches, especially the witches, they are uh, squishy. Yeah. I mean, with 1,200 uh, TV and being a team of Dark Elves, four blitzers and two witches are actually very expensive. And here comes the pickup. Not a problem at all. A decent turn for uh, Jim, if he keeps doing this, getting one rid of one uh, Dark Elf per turn. That uh, guarantees us that the game will be over uh, at the turn three of the second half.
now because the way he uh, the setup of the dark elves he can put some pressure but not too much jimmy will be have uh, easy to get the cage done yeah. oh my god good job there by the dark elves And the apple fails. <sighs> I think this is the second time I've seen the apple fail of Jimmy's in this tournament. I want to find everyone who plays Norse in real life. Still, and Jim has a reserve. So, an inch of their fucking so life. all in all, not the absolute worst, but yeah, very unfortunate being the only block the Dark Elves are going to do this turn. Breaking armor te armor nine and uh, getting the cast. Very very lucky. That which, that which there is very tempting, but Jimmy doesn't have enough rerolls to spend one uh, stupidly uh, trying to get into the cage. But uh, still, he can uh, blitz one of the blitzers and put a shitload of uh, pressure there if he wants. But I think he wants to go to the middle, solidify his position. Get the. Uh, he made a mistake with the guard there. I think he was. I mean, ah, okay. He, oh, he's making the big cage. Obviously, having two witches in the pitch makes that uh, Jimmy is going to mostly avoid the tight. Wait, why are we waiting for the use of the skill dodge? This is a blitz with tackle. Oh, and here is PC. Yes, you miss a uh, Thomas Nitz, you miss a uh, dwarf cast and a uh, dark elf cast. Exactly, exactly. The results after all are cast and no cast after all, so 50% uh, on every block. Right, I should be plugged in and ready to go. Forgive me, my partner wifed me away. All right. How was he uh, after uh, last night? Or a couple yeah. nights ago, when she had uh, a few <laughs> drinks with her uh, friends. Well, she's still struggling a little bit with a cold. Um, but yes, she was um, not particularly well the next morning. All down to the cold, of course. Of course. Of course, it's a very nasty cold uh, running around, especially in places uh, where you meet other people. Yes. I wouldn't have thought he needs the luck, Steve Motti. This is Jim with his favourite dwarfs. Uh, 
Uh, I don't know, Boo Boo. Could be they're very good. Could be they're not. We'll see. Well, he has done uh, one blitz and uh, cast one dwarf, so... Yes, I'd spotted that. That's not the, the start you'd ideally want, is it? No. Especially the apple fail. <laughs> oh, he threw the apple at it. Oh, okay. Ah, was it one of his guard dwarfs? That would be why, wouldn't it? I think uh, he was, yes. Try and get it back in the game. That makes perfect sense. Are the Dark Elves down a person too? Yes. There's Jimmy Cass, uh, one in the turn one too. Right. All I know. Obviously more important for the Dwarves to keep the numbers on the pitch than it is for the Dark Elves, but it still, um, still helps to get the numbers even. Jimmy has one reserve, so... Yep, yep, he'll still have a... One dwarf. It's not the end of the world, but it was one of the guard ones. Yeah, so it's, it's worth the Apo. I mean, he's still got the full numbers for the next half as things stand, but yes, with the with the Apo, trying to keep the, the better dwarves around is, is probably Yeah, I mean, the, the Apo is going to... The Jim's team is going to be for the guard the dwarves, the block runner, or maybe the mighty blow uh, dwarf. And I'm not sure about the mighty blow dwarf. Yeah, All I... the others... I like a Mighty Bow Dwarf myself, but that tends to be in six skill rule packs. In five, it's a little bit of a luxury, but it does mean you can get some purchase on the elves, get some fear into them, which is always nice. There's the, the Venger Bus, as it's known, that formation, the slightly spread cage with another person on the inside with guard. Trying to ensure that even if the elves dodge in, they then hit some... Uh, it's some problems when they're inside. They've still got a negative dice to hit the ball carrier from any angle. Yes, and I don't think uh, Bubu is aiming for the cage dive, at least right now. We'll see what these dark elves. Yeah, see that's interesting. It's a, it's a, it blitz way too early when he probably plans to reposition all the other dark elves. And it means if that was a double skull, you have to re-roll it because all the other dark elves are in terrible positions. So that's already making me think this is not necessarily the most experienced NAF style player. I mean, if that had gone wrong, if it was a double skull, he would have had to re-roll it because accepting the fail there would just leave Jimmy the entire pitch to run into. Yep. Now the Richard. chain there, maybe not the best chain. I think he could try to free the his blitzer or uh, get a uh, move away the guard dwarf so he can get a hit or something like that. Yeah, I mean, had he taken that guard and pushed the guard off that the blitzer, then he could have attacked another one of those dwarfs and got really strong in front of this cage. As it is, as we see, he's just repositioning around it which I personally would have done before that blitz. As he got the POW, it's not like he was suddenly waiting for some, you know, magic to happen after the attack. Oh, another... Which elf is staring menacingly at the back of the dwarves? Ooh, that's a one. Don't reroll it. Have to take Eat that, surely. Eat it. Yeah. Yeah. And again, I would have dodged the one that's standing off before the one on the ground. Because um, now the one that's standing gets hit. The witch is... It's an interesting position to put a witch if you feel you can spare one round the back. Because um, it does mean, of course, Jimmy has to keep the cage honest with, with four corners on it. And there's almost no chance Jimmy can spare two dwarves to go back and get a hit, hit on that witch, much as he might like to. He cool because I don't think he's gonna move the cage much. But I don't think he's uh, worth it right now. And now the blitz is on the blitzer. 
Taking advantage of uh, the space. Yes, but with a dwarf down already, he's unlikely to drop a foul. I just felt there was another couple of spaces could have been grabbed there. What what Jimmy is doing is is taking the space available to him and not really putting a lot of pressure on these dark elves. A lot of them can move without having to dodge. Now it doesn't mean taking hits sometimes, but if you can draw them into a fight, that's often how you find space. Of course, if you you know go too hard and base too many, you draw them into a fight, you lose. Hmm. I think Jimmy still has a uh, time. Mm -hmm. Oh, plenty of time. He's in a good position for, for where we are in terms of the turn order. Aiming to base the ball. Yeah, it looks like he's leveraging that witch to come in with a, an attack on that rear guard. Oh, no, we're getting a full-on cage base, aren't we? I assumed he was just attacking the guard and getting some ball contact, but it looks like we're going for a full press. Oh, that's a very rough result. I'm not sure about that follow. I mean, base the ball, which is instant win, but this is enough to rule tournament, so they don't follow the base the ball GG rule. Now, obviously, the ball basing can be cleared with a single blitz, um, but it doesn't mean that those two dwarves stuck now on elves at the back of the pack can come with you, because dodging off is very difficult. And yeah, as I said, we are going for a full press, aren't we? Almost every dwarf based. This is very much the pro-elf strategy. Smother the cage, stay alive long enough to pull them out of position and get a shot on the ball, and then get away while you're still alive. Yeah, that's uh, everybody base. So what Jimmy's looking for here is where he can use one that's based with someone else to clear another dwarf on, to create that movement, to create options for himself. Lovely that's start armor, for him. Armor break. Yep. And freed up two dwarves that can then move elsewhere and help others out. And again, the one on the back there... Takes that hit, freeing up another dwarf. And after that hit, it means the one at the rear with guard gets a hit, and the one that's based ahead of it gets a hit. Really nice strategy from Jim here. Probably means the cage isn't moving, but it also means most Dark Elves are going to start this turn on the ground. Jimmy getting all the dice, all the block dice. Yeah, nice turn of hitting from him. He won't be objecting to this many pals. I bet he's cursing that first set of pushes. Oh, there you are. Dice it. Oh, dice. Always get pushes. Always get pushes. He can move a little the cage, which is nice, and he gets yeah. a free hit on the witch. Yeah, it's only 30%. He doesn't have tackle on that one, which is why he's left it late. But Oh, he gets the lovely pow. Die, witch, die. Not today. No, just the, the one armor break. Which is dying was yesterday. Yeah. Yes, it was. We, we don't talk about that. We don't want sad Jimmy. So, in, in some ways, a good turn of hitting. Uh, six elves hit the ground that turn. The cage is reasonably safe. But only one armor break and only for a stun. So, mixed blessings. Well, Muppet, at my core, as we know, I am an elf player. So, 
obviously my sympathy is is with the elves though i'm on jimmy's channel so i'm trying to cover that up for you all. well i think this makes things uh, much easier for uh, jimmy that uh, one in 36 Still the deal, I think. And now Jimmy has a very easy ways to get a lot of uh, movement here. Which he absolutely needs because time is not on his side right now. He's got three turns to get over that line and he's two turns of movement away. So he needs some really big moves here. Yeah, that's exactly where I'd have been attacking is that, that top right as we look, um, Elf. Doesn't get the pal, but has hopefully created space that the uh, the cage can move up into. Now, I, I absolutely agree with Jimmy's plan here. I think this is time for a based cage. There's ways of still making it safe, but he does need every square right now. I have uh, probably mm. put the ball carrier one square up. Yeah, me too, but it's very hard to get a double on that blitzer that's ahead of the mighty blow without a lot of GFIs, um, which is what you need to make it safe, whereas this is a much safer um, spread that Jimmy's put in. Now, there is a route into this cage off, off only a, a, into only two dwarfs at the moment, which is, of course, only a four-plus dodge for the elves. And there's one on the ground in the bottom right corner. There's one on the ground that can stand up and do the cancelling. Luckily, there's no real elf that can get round and into it, except the blitzer on the mighty blow, which can then dodge in off the uh, blitzer, the dwarf blitzer, to the top right of the ball, meaning it gets an automatic Jimmy, dodge. Jimmy saw that Jimmy's just seen it. it. Yeah. He's trying to put something in ahead of the ball to make that harder, which is absolutely what he needs to do. It's a GFI, but it has to be done. Excellent. That closes that little patch, makes it a 5+, plus. can still come in using the dodge, so he can still get there, but now, of course, it would be red dice. We're not taking the risk in the bottom... Uh, with the bottom elf, which is just a line, no? movement 6, so he can do much besides yeah. uh, dodging and cancelling uh, something i think from the way it stood that's a blitzer just not with dodge so it would have been a, a one in oh, six yeah, yeah. Blitzer, blitzer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the yellow ring is a yeah. and i think jimmy decided rather than go for the one in six pal um to make it do the one in six dodge off which i i kind of agree with the only thing is a push there pushes it. Obviously, you could be just directly above it, making the dodge off harder for it to get back in front of the cage. But the fail was pretty bad there. So I, I get that's why he didn't try the one die. Yes, I feel your pain, Tom Schnees. I've had to cancel all my subscriptions with my financial situation as it currently is. Hopefully in the new year I'll be in a slightly better position and I can read sub to a few people. Now this is some real pressure because Jimmy has to move forward, as I said, only two turns to get over the line. And the ball is based. And really to be blitzing backwards here is not what Jimmy wants to be doing, so... Getting enough dwarves forward to protect a potato run because he does have to make some space here. Might be quite challenging. Let's see how Jimmy manages that. Okay, now this is very good news for Jimmy. Two elves just on hitting that one irrelevant dwarf at the back feels like a waste to me. I think uh, Jimmy is going to take advantage of the gaping hole. Yeah, I think he absolutely is now. Oh, I terrible think, play. Uh, I think understands that Jimmy has two free guard uh, dwarves. Yeah. Yeah, I think this is 
problematic from the uh, from the Dark Elves' point of view. I think there's enough dwarves to get forward and yet still deal with the uh, the problems Jimmy's got. He might have to pull a one die, but he's got the re-rolls to do that. And those two elves at the back that knocked that dwarf over, I think at least one of them would have been more use in front of this cage. Even just basing a dwarf so there weren't as many free to run forwards or to sort out the elves just behind the ball. Yep, so he starts with that one die, gets the push he needs. And that should see him free the ball in fairly short order. And still with four elves free. Yep, so there's the blitz, and he needs a push. Here's the pow. Now again, anything but a one in nine here, and he's got four dwarves and the ball. Oh, of course it's a one in nine. Rerolls, gets the push. He'll be very happy to see that. Now he's got four dwarves for a cage and the ball carrier, and can get forward in short order. Only one re-roll left, but should still be enough time and space to get where he needs to be. So the Blitzer goes up because it's fastest, alongside the Mighty Blow because it started ahead. Runner goes in behind, and then the final two. Now he'll swap them over so the guards are on diagonal corners here. Yeah, there we go. And now even if an elf dodges in, it's red dice. And centrally positioned so that runner can go in all sorts of directions to get over the line. Lovely to and, do that. And I think this is more or less sorted. Well, I mean, it'd be lovely if I could agree with you, Famir, but unfortunately, elves are absolute little buggers. They're very quick, and if he they can, uh, smashes the into the yeah, if they smash into the rear of this cage and give Jimmy a similar problem, he might have to dodge off. It's possible. Um, I don't think they're getting around in front of this cage, though. Not in any numbers. So, Jimmy will still be quite happy to see that. You might just see the front dwarves tagged and then the rear of the cage attacked. Yes, anything but a one in nine is one of the scariest thoughts in Blood Bowl. You're not wrong. Although eight out of nine times, it should be fine, shouldn't it, Tom? But it, it never is. Yeah. And now the ball is based again. But he needs to do more. He does. Very much like my son in school bit more effort try a bit harder please oh uh, obviously he's going to reroll this he has to obviously reroll. yes still got one more in the tank and no still more, not no, enough because no uh, more turns to free. use come on really Jimmy can free the guard the door oh here we go he needs to put them in the, in the in the way so the guard dwarf doesn't have uh, an easy access. That's to the absolutely back of the spot cage. on for me. Yep. If that guard blitzer gets up to the rear of the cage, it solves almost all of Jimmy's problems. So a screen, or no, okay, just that, more elves that around it. <laughs> that, that doesn't help. In the square. <laughs> that doesn't help at all. And that doesn't help much either. A little bit, but not as much as you'd want it to. But the first one was more or less irrelevant because that is where I would put the other guard. Well, now directly behind I think that guard. I think the mighty blow dwarf has a chain on the lino on the top uh, left, which can free the ball carrier.
Yes, actually, the one on the ground, if you move the mighty blow just in front of the ball carrier, the one on the ground can blitz and has a chain that can free the ball carrier. Yeah, that one too. There are one. chains here involved and uh, not difficult at all. Just need to move the mighty blow dwarf. Okay, but Jim looks like Jim's picking a different route. Of course, that does require a pow, and if it, if it doesn't get it, you've got other dwarves that can try and pow it, but that's certainly what I'd be doing. Just one step left with the mighty blow and then blitz with the dwarf on the floor. One pow, frees the ball and gets you home. Jim's not doing it that way, though. He's going with the mighty blow up the side. Does the same job if it works. But now he does need to power the one that will still be on the ball carrier as well. And pushes will still keep it on the ball carrier. So it um, does exactly the same job, but it means he hits with the mighty blow. So probably better than one. Pow here. Gets it. And it's all good for Jimmy. Didn't even need to bring anything up from the other dwarves. Now, this is something we don't talk about a lot when we talk about when it's time to base a cage. There's basing and there's basing. And if you're giving lots and lots of pushes and lots of chain push options to free things, it's it's not as good sometimes as a slightly looser set of basings. Yeah. Especially if you, when you base one dwarf makes two other uh, dwarves free. Yeah. So now Jimmy just taking a few bonus hits while he's got a reroll and he knows he's in range. And then... And uh, that's it. That's, that's cool. one nil for uh, Jimmy. And he's 11 versus 9 at the moment. Yeah, some, uh, some lovely... Um, some lovely turns from Jim there when things got tight towards the end of the drive. Creating the movement and really making sure he got home in good order. Now Jimmy going for the one turn uh, defense. Well, he was. He's decided he doesn't like that for some reason. And I didn't like his version of the one-turn defense, but I still quite liked it as a as a way of doing things. Mind you, this is also a very hard... If he's prepared to step that in front, it's a very hard defense to, uh, to smash your way through. Maybe more worried about the riot? Maybe so. Maybe giving the Dark Elves an extra turn? Jimmy, right now, is winning. 1-0. You are watching this video in this specific uh, moment in time. Jimmy is winning 1-0. So the Dark Elves, of course, it's, a, it's quite a mean rule set in terms of both the money and skills on offer. Dark Elves building with just 11, so two out means that they are capped at nine right now. Of course, we can't tell why they're out, because nothing hangs over them telling us. They're not in separate boxes telling us, they're just lying there. May I, Captain, I can confirm you that uh, Jim is still winning. And it's not a riot, so it's going to be uh, three hits on the LOS and uh, one blitz. Yeah, Delve's not set up to one turn here, not surprisingly. It's just a four hit round for them. Yeah, he was also looking for the riot. Yeah. Which I guess still only happens one in 36 times. In this rule set. Oh. He will greet one of the blocks. Because he yes. still has one reroll, so the, 
Absolutely yeah. pointless here, keeping it. I was surprised it wasn't the first one. I would take the first one that wasn't a power when we rolled it. But I suppose it does risk a double skull on one of the other hits. Or a one in nine if you're going to hit with linemen when you've got four blitzers on the pitch. To be fair, he'd taken hits with all of the blitzers apart from the one that's presumably going to do the blitz, yes. Which is the and there skull. is the dub skull. <laughs> so there you are. Officially, this Dark Elf player, much better, much better than me. Perfectly dice management by... Uh, Pogla, you're not wrong. I think it was kept in the backfield in case of a blitz to keep it safe from Jimmy hitting it. But unless the Dark Elves have a runner I haven't spotted, then it's probably a line elf that should do their passing for them. No, no runners in this team for the Dark Elves. Jimmy offering only one uh, dwarf with a skill as a possible target of a blitz, and it will be a, not an ideal blitz. Yeah, I like going that. For, going for the guard uh, dwarf is uh, risky. Yes, you rarely see people attack the central point of the boat or um, the rule, rule of five. Of, rule of five defense, call it what you wish. Um, with very strong teams, you can see them power through and have a go at it with a strength four piece, but the elves almost certainly won't. Um, the only other place, obviously you could have it one space back and have all of your guards redeployable, but I think it's doing a good job there. Or you could have it on the line of scrimmage, making those original line of scrimmage hits harder to get. But of course it does mean if they choose to get them, they're going to knock your guard over. And with one guard off the pitch already, I think that would be hard to risk. Oh, there was a one... Uh... A stand uh, elf for the dark elves. Yes, yeah, so they, they, one of them was only a, a KO, wasn't it? And it's come back. Yeah, the witch um, came back. But now one of them's been stunned. Very controversial, the new. Um, what used to be uh, throw a rock. Because five times out of six, it stuns a single piece, but one time out of six, a piece gets sent off with no ability to argue or bribe to prevent it. Some people think that is worse than something dying you can at least throw an apple at. Well, that's uh, a very interesting concept. Yeah, I'm not sure I agree with them, but I have heard it said. So nice for Jimmy this time, just two pushes and one dwarf goes down. The elves have the ball in a very complicated position because they have to pick it up and they remain very close to the dwarves, which is exactly where the dwarves won the ball. Yep. But I think we'll and see yes. pick up. Oh, oh that's a one reroll gone. Yeah. And again, as he hadn't secured the ball, you can't take that double skull. Which is why, in a position like that, I would probably have secured the ball before blitzing. Yes, at least uh, move the witch and the lino. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh, I think. Uh, oh. So the Dark Elves a person down and a reroll down. They've only got the one. Jimmy, full I 11 did, I and think three Jimmy's going to make good use of his uh, guard uh, dwarfs. I think it's the mighty blow that's going to be a lot of use here to him. If he can chip even one more elf, the fact they're down to a single reroll 
means even if they do score on this drive, Jimmy's going to be very confident of overtime. Well, you can hear him muttering about that uh, that push, and if you can't, then you've not known Jimmy very long. Now Jimmy needs to be a little careful just in case the elves decide to move to the left side of the pitch. Now is he going to ram these guards up in those blitzers' faces? I thought he was going to. Looks like he is, yeah. There's two arguments here. Looks like, yes, Jimmy is centering that final dwarf, and I get why. Um, it might have been possible to push one up on the left side slightly, but keeping it centre responds to where the ball is, as well as making the left that base, little base, bit more base. secure. This won't fail. I'm on the right. Burr, burr, burr. Because it is a responsive piece. When just about everything else is based, keeping something back you can use next turn if it doesn't seem vital to shove it in somewhere is probably a good idea. As you suggested, the uh, the Delves pulling over to the other side. Good prediction technique there for me. Yep. Okay. Now he's there. Now what? <laughs> what is the play <laughs> with that elf there? Because uh, it's very isolated. It is. It is. Um, and obviously that dwarf that was centralised is in a lovely position to drop a blitz on it. And, uh... and all the other elves have swapped sides without really moving forwards. Now, it does mean the dwarves have to move across, but not all of them, of course. Just if every dwarf was now four paces to the left, that would be a lovely shape. And now he's trying to get a block, gets the pow. Uh, that gives him a single, if he had advanced. Uh, I was going to say he would then have a block on these um, guard pieces, but he's chosen not to. Oh, he's going for it anyway. He, yep, why he, not? He out dwarf the dwarves. He used the play of the dwarves against them. You love to see it. The elves, I didn't love that last turn. 
I didn't mind the blitz a push, but as Vermeer said, nothing came with it, so it got very isolated and hence was blitzed over. Yeah, it's like, okay, you got that, you manage that, but now you have a lot of the Vescalos that's an instant. He's looking. Does he think he can take it? I, I'm i not sure he can. I think there needed to be a couple no, more draws shuffled to, to the it. left. I think he has to re-roll that. Yeah. Again, perhaps taking that hit before moving a couple of the dwarves to the left, which he could have done first. Okay, very oh. well rewarded. Very well yeah. rewarded. Master reroll there. He'll he'll swap that reroll for that serious injury any time of the day. And that move above the blitzer could absolutely have been done before that hit. And uh, this one's here on the side, which. Well, you might want to work out where these ones go after taking that hit, but certainly that runner going and uh, locking that blitzer down, I think, could have been done earlier. But then, I I've always said, every player makes mistakes in every turn and in most activations. Uh, the question is, how big a mistake and how well do you cope with them? Yeah, Raven, I think if the, that elf move, I liked it, but it needed at least one other elf to come with it. Two elves there is a massively different prospect to one, because you can't blitz both over in the same attack, obviously. One just screams, well, your blitz is here. And whilst the elves did swap sides, quite a few of them stayed in place to fight the dwarves. Now, I think if you're moving sides and trying to create space, it should be an entire team effort, not a partial one. And I think that's why Jimmy's been able to get quite into a better position than he has. And again, walling off that blitzer seems to have worked. Personally, I would have been looking to 3-2 it out at the end of the turn. But they've decided just to stand up and take yet more hits with it. Um, I think that's a bad decision, but we'll see. Now who's going to do the blitz? Because there is only one witch and one lino able to do anything besides the ball carrier of course but you don't want to move the ball carrier uh, to close and the question is where does the ball carrier goes now back he can go to the side oh here comes the blitz that's uh that's a choice push is not helpful but the choice interesting um, I think is the word I'd use. I think the prime target for the Blitz this time for the Elves was the Jimmy's ball carrier. Yes, I'd agree. That's where I would have tried that to That will have been uh, making it easier to free the Blitzer. Yep. And allow you to have a lot of uh, pieces on the side of the pitch because now that the that doesn't do anything. Well, I mean, it's another turn past and the elves are not at risk, but yeah, it's not really achieving much so far, is it? Especially based in the, with the witch that the uh, dwarf there. I, I don't know what the... Well, it does create a slight problem for Jim. In that he can, uh, I mean, I would hit the blitzer with the one that's on the witch, and then blitz it with the um, with the blitzer, but the, the sorry, the other runner. But the problem is that's a non-tackle on the witch, and he'd really like to hit that witch with the tackle. But that means blitzing the blodge dark elf blitzer, and that's going to be at least one GFI. An 
interesting move, which could just as easily have been done by the next dwarf over. Okay, he's blitzing up there. Interesting. It's an armor break. But only to a stun. Lovely, lovely pow there from the runner. Big old power on the witch. No armor break. Yes, I push, but this works uh, fine for Jimmy. He has uh, the guard, the uh, dwarves all over the place. Yeah, at the moment it's all good for Jimmy. It's gone a little more vertical than he would like. He'd prefer the game spread across the field where the dwarves are the strongest. Um, but at least it's more or less within a dwarf's reach, just about everything that's involved in the game right now. Hey, Badger, how are you doing? Yeah, hey. What place does he uh, has? Maybe he could even score with a dodge with an a pass, but uh, in these uh, current rules, I wouldn't advise that. Yeah, it's 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 tricky, uh, particularly as the ball is on a witch, which passes on something ridiculous like a five. I know the elves are investing a lot of players uh, doing blocks and uh, doing things uh, instead of dodging with a 2 plus. Yes. To reposition to better uh, lands. Oh, Blitz with the ball carrier. Love to see it. Gets the pow, but you have to follow. And now you're in contact with one dwarf that, okay, you can block him, but. Uh... Oh. oh my god. And through it comes. We have a potato. We certainly have a potato. Open the back of chips. And that's all the rerolls gone as well. Interesting and slightly irrelevant dwarf to base, but there you are. Your mileage may vary. Now, the thing he has done here is abandoned the other the two dwarf runners over the other side of the pitch, so that's probably what inspired him to it. But there's still some dwarves at the back of the original line of scrimmage area that are very much in range. Right now, Jimmy only needs uh, a few GFIs to hit the ball. Four. With the dice. Four GFIs to hit the die, the ball with mighty blow. And I might do that before moving the runner, because if you knock it down onto the edge, goodness knows where the ball's going. And if you knock it down and it isn't on the edge, then there's a lot of elves ready to flood over there. Of course, no rerolls left. And now this chain frees the... Oh, cool. Have a free the runner. Yep, could have, but didn't. So he'll still have to dodge off. And that would have put the runner only one GFI away to provide the assist. So it was a lovely, lovely move from Jim, but didn't pay off, because Blood Bowl isn't about what you deserve, it's about what you wrest from the dice. And Jimmy gets the pow. 
Now he has to decide. Uh, wait until Leopold remembers that he has to use dodge. All right. Get shit on! There Get we go. Shit on! Fuck you! Bangs the witch. Does bang it up uh, upwards away from the edge, so he's decided to keep the ball there rather than bounce it out or risk bouncing it out. <laughs> Probably sensible. <laughs> now he just needs to shore it up and stop the elves getting over there in numbers. Now the runner cannot get to it and pick it up, even in a dodge off, but I still think we'll see Jimmy try and reposition it over in that direction. Nope, he's taken the hit. Gets the pound. Oh, and the follow-up there keeps it honest, keeps it... Oh no, of course it was a dodge, so it doesn't. Oh, and a death, making things uh, even easier for uh, Jimmy next uh, turns. Massive equity shift, earthquake shift. Yep, and with the witch uh, stunned and the elves that are nearby, one of them double based and one of them based in a way that makes it very hard to reach the ball area. Jim's in a very good position right now. Death, death, death. So an equity see for a scale of seven in the Dio scale. <laughs> And no, because there are no rerolls, I think this is it. This is the tail of the game. Yeah, I, I suspect we're done here. Yep. Yeah. I'd have thought the Unless witch, the other witch will try and come over to that yeah. area. Unless oh. there is a crazy uh, result with the failing pickups or balls bouncing in uh, random places. Yeah, sadly, there's enough turns left that Jimmy will have to pick this ball up, probably, but um, the situation is still very much under control. Not going for the ball though. No, that's, um... no, because uh, I don't think he has business with enough movement to pick up the ball. Well, he had a blitzer over there that could have gone for the pickup. I think that's a... no, no. It's two line doors, isn't it? No, he didn't. So he's waiting for the next turn and the uh, the runner. But that blitzer just moved forward to do the blitz. Could have gone for a pickup. The witch elf can still do things, but without rerolls. Yeah. If that witch on the floor jumps up, picks up the ball, runs away, and scores, I'll say well deserved. Good job.
You know, it's like the, the detergent that kills 99.9% of the bacteria. Show flashlights. Go fuck yourself. Well, the bacteria that survives is like... Deserve it, you know? You have to respect that bacteria. Yeah. Of course he's going to try because, after all, there is not much uh, left that he can do. Here we go. That was a nuffled note. I mean, if the ball has uh, bounced when it's gone out of bounds, gone down, it would have been also, yeah, probably pro a little more problematic for Jimmy there. So. The, of the three directions, it's probably the worst one for him. But in some ways, if he can get up there, um, it could be all right. But it does give the elves a little bit of a chance of recovery. Depends how quickly Jim can get up there and get around this. It's a single GFI for the Blitzer with Guard to pick it up. And the runner is out of range. I, I like a ball in my hand versus elves. I do. I want to feel my balls right there in my hand. Cover it with the dew of a morning glory day. <laughs> Talking oh, about that, there, is a, there was a bar here in Edinburgh, in Morningside, which is a super posh area, traditional uh, of town, that they changed the name of the bar to Morning Glory. <laughs> and it was an absolutely massive sign that was the first thing you saw when you get down in the bus. Morning side, that's Edinburgh, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very Ooh, close to Edinburgh Centre, but uh, in really, really posh area. I mean, people there are bloody loaded and they are yes. very traditional in their uh, I points did a, of view. I did a Stoppard play up in Morningside during the festival one year. Sold very well as Stoppard will in that sort of market. Very much right so, to the middle classes. Yeah, the Morning Glory, off. they had to change the name for the complaints, but the complaints took time to arrive. Well, that's people without a sense of humor, isn't it? Yeah, no, and also they didn't know what Morning Glory meant. Because <laughs> but I remember it's... being there, going there, and I say, you know, talking to the people there in a path and all that. You know, Morning Glory, that's, that's a very. But what the owners name. didn't know. And uh, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the people were, oh, what do you I mean? See. I, I said, Morning Glory, that's, you know, that's, that's, that's slang for an erection. What do you mean? I think that and it was a while, it was a long while, eh, because it seems Morning Glory is more an American term than a British term. Wow. Yeah, there was, there was the Oasis song, What's the Story, Morning Glory, which I think I thought made that obvious to all of us. But um, I can just imagine the nice ladies of Morningside, once they hear about it, going, well, we're not having that. No, 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 they, they weren't having that, 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 no, no, you can uh, be guaranteed that the carriage quarters, the most uh, pretentious uh, pub in town, beautiful place, but uh, no, no, carriage quarters, carriage quarters, it's a lovely place. For some reason, I had you down as Glasgow. I thought you were in Glasgow, but no, you're no, in the no, nice... I live in... A... In the nice part of Edinburgh. Don't live there. I went there because there are very nice pubs there. Animans. Animans. To, to be a, I, I feel I belong to the world. So oh, yeah, I used to go there because there are uh, very nice uh, pubs and that. And the Canimans is an experience. It's a beautiful pub. But the owner is one of these, you know, someone when someone opens the door, it's like, no, out, bar. It's not the bar. No, no, you, you can't here. No, not welcome. So we should have discussed the game a little more. Jimmy there failed to pick up, but he's got enough dwarves around it that he didn't feel he needed to re-roll it because yeah. um, very little chance of the elves getting hold of it and doing anything with it. And uh, here comes the the best case for the elves is a pass play with is just roll a bunch of sixes and pray. And unless you're very, very few races in the modern Blood Bowl, the best case being a pass play is terrible, terrible news. 
He was going for the pass there, but didn't even make the one off the dwarf. The two plus, obviously, but the dodge. So not quite a done deal yet. It's still theoretically possible there are elves in the end zone. If Jimmy fails the pickup, I suppose an elf could get it and throw it to another elf that could run and pass it and hand it off, but it, it seems remarkably unlikely at this point. And if Jim secures the ball, I am prepared to say GG. Dubia, I do know what Sassanak means. I would define myself more as a Londoner than as English. And indeed, if you'd been taking note, there is a Home Nations International Blood Bowl tournament coming up. And I've agreed to captain the Barbarian side. So confident am I in not being in Team England. Oh, I hear it. Jimmy G has arrived. Just to see the glorious uh, pick up. And there we are. I think that's job done. I don't see how the Delves get it back and yet still manage to pass it. There's not enough Elves near enough to do that. Oh, I might be wrong. No, now that one's down. I'm not wrong. Theoretically... The, tile, the tail of the game. That's it. We're done here. And Jimmy passes to the fourth round of how many rounds after this tournament? Um, I don't know. There's 64 okay, teams in it. 64. Two, so first two round, places. 64, second this, round, 52, 16. So he's going to the run of eight. Yeah. And two places go forwards. So it might be that... I didn't know if they did two sets of 32 or one set of 64 and both finalists reach the next stage. I don't oh, yeah, know maybe, how the maybe, draws maybe, were set yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Might be two maybe, 32s and the winner of each or it might be a 64 and both finalists go. If it was me, oh. it'd be two thirty-twos and the winners. Oh, but, you know, Jimmy! I'm Illuminate not us! I didn't even realise you could reach. What? I mean, yeah, that one can reach. Can't. There's nothing that can pick it up afterwards. Yeah. Well, if he powered me there and it scattered to here. <laughs> yeah, Three, theoretically. Four, five, six, but... yeah. Oh God, I thought it was done. I actually thought it was done. Flip me. No, it, it's effectively done. Not one hundred percent done. Now it's done. <sighs> now it's done. Yeah. It is not even at any point. Doing anything except in the turn, is it? It's just time yeah. griefing. It's just time griefing if I don't end the turn. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I thought you played super well in the uh, the first half, Jimmy, when he was pressuring the back of your cage. I loved how you got your movement and got the dwarves free. I thought that was a absolute lesson in how you uh, you move a cage forward despite that much pressure. And then I thought in the second half the Dells played terribly, just. <laughs> Awful. Yeah, and I made a um, real big mistake, didn't I? They, they got me a cas. <laughs> yes. Yes, it did. Um, Classic Blood Bowl. And oh, I think Jimmy. because they were playing so badly, there was a time or two where I felt you could have done, you know, some safe moves before you took the hits. And yeah. one of them you had to re-roll because you hadn't moved enough dwarves yet. Yeah. But then that was one, one that, yeah, that was the one that got you the cas. So it was fine. <laughs> And, you know, we all do that. We all do a little bit of turn ordering that could have been better. But, um, you know, you weren't... I'm sorry to Boo Boo or whatever he's called. I didn't feel you were facing someone of the quality that it was ever really going to be a problem. Well, it always can be, can it? Elves can always roll can dice. Be. That's the problem. Yep, Even that can. witch elf, like, there could have just rolled a 4, 4, 4, 3, 2. <laughs> and, like, and it was probably going to be far enough away after that, right? Like, and, okay, no re-rolls, but it was possible. After putting them there, I was like, oh, shit, I should have put another player behind <laughs> I was like, oh god, this is actually too easy because because the, I forgot the jump up, which is terrible, right? Because yes. I've played quite yeah. a lot of dark elves. And You're not unknown forgot. to the darkies. Yeah, I totally forgot jump up, and I was like, oh my god, he's actually he can actually you know get so far clear of me now that it's uh, looking pretty terrible. But um, right, anyway, absolute shitter. I mean, I wouldn't. Yeah, yeah, Adam probably will call me an absolute shitter. But, uh, you know, I, I'm pretty sure what I did wrong and everything. And, you know, maybe I didn't solve the chain as well as I could have done, but I really wanted to hit with my e blow. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there was a slightly easier way to solve it, but the, the mighty blow hit, you know, made that a very reasonable choice instead. And actually, it gave you pretty much the same solve. Mm. It just, you know, committed a couple of people earlier than you needed to, maybe. Um, but it was, you know, he left you some nuts and lovely chains to get out of that final press he had on the cage because he'd only had enough elves to pressure the rear of the cage. 
yeah. too much of the front was left unpressed. Yep, yep. And at the time, as I said, I think that's because he dropped back to knock over a pointless dwarf with two elves when he really didn't need to. Mm. Had they, you know, had they come around the front of that cage two turns earlier, it would have been a slightly easier prospect for him. Yep. But I thought you played really, really well. Um, so I'm going to disappear. We do have some dinner coming. Um, but good stuff, my friend. Good stuff. Thank I look you forward to the next round. Yep. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. Yeah. Glorious. And um, the next round. So how is this tournament goes? Is just being one big group of 64 or two groups of 32? So it's it is one big 64 man tournament, and somebody wins and gets some warp stone, and both finalists qualify for the play-ins. So you are in the round of eight, last eight, next game. Yeah. Yeah. Versus, I think, Andre, probably Andre. Um, hopefully Andre, I think, because I think he's playing Lizard Man. Oh, no, I think it's it's Andre's humans or Underworld he's playing. That's what he's playing. Um, we'll see if this ever loads. Yeah, so it's Andre versus Underworld. So, um, you know, neither of those are really good. <laughs> and then... Um, and then I think this is like orcs, lizard men, humans, and lizards. So there's a good chance of lizards to get in the semi final if I win. Like the quarter final is going to be hard. And if I win the quarter, like the quarter final is either Andrew with humans or Cube Farm with Underworld. And the, the it's very likely to be, you know, lizard men and a loss in the semi final. Uh, but then obviously, if I get to the final, probably versus K Fog. And uh, but then obviously that I mean that would be the dream right get the final versus Kefo we both qualify he beats me three nil <laughs> happy days as usual <laughs> yeah well, there you go that's that's I mean, that was good having that little bit of the tournament I think at the end so there you go uh, thank you very much obviously PC who's done one uh, very very nice of PC and thank you very much find me a glorious having you in the booth again as always a pleasure to be here. Amazing. And thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And stay fantastic.